On today's video, we're gonna show you how to extend your growing season by building an inexpensive hoop house for our $30 raised beds. So stay tuned. Hey everybody, Jack here from Mindful Homestead. And if you live in a part of the country where it's still not quite your last frost, you're probably itching to get some stuff in the ground. So we've already sown a pretty good amount of seeds in our raised beds and the other day that we were forecasted to get a couple inches of snow, not too much. So, so I had to run out and get some supplies to build a quick little hoop house for the top of our raised beds. So for the four foot by four foot raised bed, we already have our mini greenhouse modified to fit right over the top of that. Uh, I did a video on that, I'll link it up here in the corner. But I needed to run out and construct something relatively quickly that would protect the seedlings that we have sprouting in the four foot by eight foot raised beds. So I did some figuring in my head, a little bit of planning on paper. I hopped online to one of the big box home improvement stores and I was able to put together an order for everything I needed and it pick it up. So with everything going on right now, I didn't wanna be wandering around the stores. So it was pretty great that I was able to do the order online and show up and essentially load it in the back of my truck. So these small hoop houses are relatively inexpensive to build. They fit perfectly right over our four by eight raised bed, which I will link a tutorial to up here in the corner. So without further ado, let's get into it. I'll show you the supplies that you need. Uh, I'm gonna put a link in the description to a blog post on this, where we'll actually show you the lumber that you'll need to buy and then what you'll need to actually cut from that lumber. But it's all relatively straightforward. You just need to make 90 degree cuts on this, which is great. So as far as lumber that you'll need, you'll need three, eight foot long two by fours. You'll need one eight foot long two by two. You'll need five 10 foot lengths of half inch PVC pipe. Schedule 40 is fine. You'll also need three eight foot lengths of one by three furring strips. For hardware, you'll need a longer screw. This will be for securing the two by fours together. You're gonna to be screwing into some end grain. So you really wanna have a nice long screw there to get some purchase. I'm using three and an eighth GRKs. Uh, they're obviously a little bit overkill being a structural screw, but it's what I have laying around, so I'll use it. You'll need one and a quarter inch screws. You'll need some one and three quarter inch screws. You'll need a set of hinges. These are two and a half inch narrow hinges. You'll want some sort of handle. You don't need this, but it's nice to have. You'll need a 10 pack of half inch pipe straps, and you'll need some sort of plastic to go over the whole thing. This is a piece of UV resistant polyethylene plastic. I got it in a 10 foot by 25 foot strip. 10 feet by 25 feet should be enough for two bed covers. Uh, if you want, you can buy the UV resistant. You don't have to buy the UV resistant. You may just have to replace it a little bit more frequently, but the UV resistant is nice. And then as far as tools go, it's not that crazy. You'll want a circular saw. If you have a miter saw, you can use that, but a circular saw is fine. You're going to want a drill bit, specifically a 1 8 uh, You're going to use that to pre-drill some of the PVC so you don't crack it. You want a tape measure. An impact gun is handy if you have it, but you don't need it. You can just use a regular drill and a staple gun. You don't need the staple gun, but you'll see when we're putting the plastic on at the end, it does help. So your cut list for this project is super simple. You are going to leave two of your two by fours in their eight foot length. You're gonna cut one of your two by fours into two four foot pieces. You're gonna cut your five pieces of 10 foot PVC down to six feet a piece. And you're gonna cut one of your one by three furring strips into four foot lengths. The other two of them, you're gonna leave at eight foot long. So what I'm gonna do now is I'll set up the camera. I'm gonna make all my cuts and then I'm gonna bring everything into the backyard. One thing I forgot to tell you is that you wanna use your straightest two by fours for the long sides. If you got a two by four that's got a little bit of a twist or a bend in it, you're gonna to wanna to use that for the short four foot sections. So this one had a little bit of a twist to it. So we're gonna use it for the outsides. Also, always double check the total length of your boards. Sometimes you'll see a slightly shorter two by four or other piece of lumber get mixed in with the eight foot section at the store you're at. It doesn't happen often, but it does happen sometimes. So if you're cutting something into two four foot sections, always make sure that you're working with an eight foot section to start. So 
So here's everything you're gonna need pre-cut. You've got your two four foot sections of two by four. You've got your two eight foot sections of two by four. You've got your eight foot section of two by two. You've got five six foot long pieces of half inch PVC. You've got two four foot sections of one by three furring strip. And then you've got two eight foot sections of one by three furring strip. So now what we'll do is I'll bring all this lumber into the backyard where the garden is and we'll get it set up there. So the first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna build the frame around the outside using our two by fours. The four foot sections are gonna go on either end and then they're actually gonna sandwich in the eight foot sections in the middle. So yeah, we'll get the pieces of two by four propped up on the edges of the raised bed and we'll screw everything together. So once you get your frame all put together, you're gonna wanna put your hinges on the back. You don't have to put your hinges on right now, you can wait to do them later, but I find having it connected to the raised bed makes it a little bit easier to get the PVC into an arc because you're gonna be putting a lot of pressure on it. And if they're not connected to the raised bed, you can actually slide this off. So you just wanna make sure that the frame that you made for the top is lined up with your raised bed underneath. They should fit perfectly one on top of each other. And then you're just gonna install your hinges. I like to do them about a foot from either end on this back two by four here. You're gonna use your one and a quarter inch screws for this part. Once you've got your hinges on, come to the other side and just check to make sure that everything lifts up smoothly. That looks like it's working good. So the next thing we're gonna do is we're gonna mark where our PVC stays that bow over the top are gonna get mounted on this eight foot section. So you're gonna take your tape measure and you're gonna tuck it on the end of the eight foot section where the eight foot section and the four foot section come together. And you're gonna measure two inches in and that's gonna be the center of where your first PVC stay is gonna go. Your next one's gonna go at two feet. Your middle one's gonna go at four feet. The second to last one is gonna go at six feet. And then again on this end, you're gonna go two inches from the end of that eight foot side. So we're gonna do that on this side and then we're gonna head over to the other side and do the same thing over there as well. So the next step is gonna be using our one and a quarter inch screws. At each mark we made, we are going to install one of these half inch pipe straps. The reasons we're gonna put them on the inside are twofold. Uh, one, if you put them on the outside, it actually creates a sharp point with the end of the PVC pipe where your plastic can tear. But the other reason is that it's much easier to in install the PVC and bend it over because if you mount it to the inside, when you bow your PVC over, it'll actually be held in place by the frame on the other side. Versus if we had them on the outside, you would have to hold it in place while you slipped the pipe strap over it and then tried to tighten it down. So it's just a much easier installation process to do it this way and put them on the inside. All right, so now that you have your pipe straps loosely installed, what you're gonna do is you're gonna take your PVC six foot sections, you're gonna put them in the pipe straps, and then you're gonna tighten down each one so that your PVC pipe is standing straight up in the air like a flagpole. So once you get those pipe straps tightened down, that's what it should look like. And the PVC should be held in there pretty good. So the next thing we're gonna do is grab each one of these PVC lengths and we're gonna gently bow it over and tuck it up against the other side. They should stay if you just tuck them up against the frame and then we can come back and put our pipe straps on later. If you want, you can actually tighten down each pipe strap on the opposite side as you go along. But I find that it's easier just to bow them all over, tuck them in and then come back and then hit them with the pipe straps. You do wanna watch your face while you're doing this. 
if one of these that's bowed over releases and comes up and whacks you in the face, at the very least, it's gonna hurt a good bit. You could probably lose some teeth or have blood drawn though. So definitely just be mindful of where these things are. So now you're gonna come back with your pipe straps and your inch and a quarter screws, and you're gonna tighten the PVC down on the opposite side from where we started it. So now that we've got our hoops up, what we're gonna do is we're gonna find the center of this whole hoop house. Uh, and we're gonna do that simply just by measuring two feet from one of the ends of this four foot section. And what this is for is we're gonna use our section of eight foot two by two to actually screw to the PVC hoops as a support down the middle. And the way we'll do that is we'll install it at either end first, and then we'll just drill the three hoops in the middle. So again, because this end piece is four feet, all you have to do is measure two foot from one end. That's gonna be your center. And then you can just stand up, kind of eyeball it from the top here and just mark it. And we'll do the same thing down on the other end. This is where you're gonna use your eighth inch drill bit to go through both the top and bottom of the PVC. Put it in the two by two. Now on this first side, because it's at an angle right now, I have it resting down there. You're not gonna wanna go all the way in. This is just to hold it up while we go down and do the other side. Once you get the ends tightened down, you can go back and pre-drill the PVC in the middle for the other three bows. Don't screw it down too tight or you'll break it like I did. If you do tighten it down too much and end up cracking it, come back with a piece of tape. This isn't so much a structural issue as it is more just an issue of that's a sharp piece of plastic there and we don't want it cutting our plastic covering that's gonna go over. All right, we're getting down to the last steps, which is good. So you're gonna take your plastic now, and I like to stretch it over the top first to make sure everything's gonna reach. But now we're just gonna use a staple gun, and this just makes it a little bit easier for us to install. I got all the way down to this end from the other end and realized that um, I didn't have enough plastic. I guess what happened when I measured and cut yesterday for that one, I was a little bit off. It looks like I was maybe six inches off. So now I don't have enough plastic to kind of tuck down here. So I do have some extra plastic from Friday when I built the first one. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna use this and the Gorilla Tape to just kind of hack it together. And it should work fine. These are not exactly high stress structures. So what I'll do is I'll hack it together for now and then next spring or later this summer when we're headed into the fall, um, I'll just go out and I'll get another piece of plastic. This stuff's not too expensive. So yeah, don't be like me. So your last step on this is gonna be to take your one by three furring strips and you're actually gonna use those to screw in the plastic and make sure it's held secure. Uh, just these staples, they're not necessarily gonna be strong enough to keep this from coming off in a whipping wind. So by putting those furring strips on there, they'll hold everything a lot tighter and a little bit longer term. The nice thing about them is because we're using screws, if you need to replace the plastic, you can just pull them off and then the staples are relatively easy to pull out.
Once your furring strips are attached on all four sides, feel free to use a pocket knife or utility blade to cut off the extra plastic at the bottom. And your last step is just to install the handle. So that's really all there is to building these things. I think between the two of them, I probably have 50 bucks in each one. Now keep in mind, all the measurements that I gave in today's video are for a hoop house that's gonna go over top of our $30 four foot by eight foot raised bed that I talked about earlier. I'll put a link to that video in the description down below if you wanna go check it out. Also make sure to click the link in the description down below and that'll take you to a blog post that we put up with the materials list and the cut list for this project. As always, thanks for watching and have a great day. Bye.